Well, guys, I'm here at John Curtis High School today. Tamika's about to send me to the office, I think. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. But Tamika Johnson, LSU basketball great, just all around great person. WNBA career, uh, played professional basketball for 13 years, was a WNBA champion, was a WNBA rookie of the year. She was an All-American at LSU. It goes on and on. Great to see you. Good Thanks to for see doing you. This. Always, always good to see you, Jack. Congratulations, you're a state champion here at John Curtis. They just won the state title. I am, I am. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah. It was hard, but it was fun. You can just retire now, go out on top, right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Still more work to be done. Still have the, more grooming to be done yeah, for the kids. Tamika's got a long way to go uh, in her coaching career, just getting started here. And uh, how do you like this, uh, this coaching thing? Just tell me about that. It's funny how I never wanted to coach. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I was like... No way, if I, especially if I got a kid that was like me. I knew what type of personality I had. But uh, it's actually exciting to be able to give back. It really is. To see uh, the progress and the process that each one of them go through to get to where they want to go has been really fun so far. As I looked up your stats, you finished as LSU's all-time leader and the SEC's all-time leader in assists. You were always dishing. Listen, that, that record is a collective uh, record. Believe me, I've had some great people. Sir. I was surrounded by some great people that was great finishers. So um, I'm happy about that. Yeah, Simone hit a few difficult shots, I guess. Just a few. <laughs> a couple of few. <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they got to make the shot, but boy, you were, you were so good. Uh, Thank you. At five foot three, too. I mean, you were always the smallest person on the floor, but... To everybody else, my, to me, my size was never, I mean, like, I never thought about it. I mean, I've always been that size, so <laughs> I never even thought about it. I just love the game. I love to play, and anybody that was in front of me and my team that was trying to stop us was a problem. <laughs> well, it was a problem <laughs> right around them. Uh, Tamika, from 2001, the 2001-2002 season through 2004-2005, I'll talk to you about all that in a second. But first... Uh, LSU women's basketball has really captivated the headlines. It has really generated more talk than LSU women's basketball has generated, quite frankly, in a decade or more. Uh, with the hire of Kim Mulkey, you made an effort to be at the PMAC. <laughs> I did. You were sitting there behind one of the goals there watching. Uh, I was. It, it was a reunion of sorts. Uh, <laughs> Flo, Florence Williams. Yes. Was there? Uh, Keanu Kian Chaney. Yeah, Q. Yeah. Keanu yeah. Chaney, who's in coaching yourself. Southern Lab, she is. She's back yeah. at her alma mater. I think it was awesome, one, to see all my teammates, um, but it was also good to see uh, the excitement for, women, for women's basketball. Again, that type of excitement, it almost the atmosphere felt how it was when we were there. Um, and it also shows that uh, Scott Woodward is back in women's basketball. When you go out and you make a move like that, that means that you're committed and you're 100% in seeing the program in women's basketball excel. So that was a good thing for me to see. Tamika, as it was getting closer, you know, the older you get, the more skeptical you get. When you're younger, everything's sunshine and rainbows. Oh, yeah, things will, things will end happily. The older you get, like, she's not leaving. <laughs> you know, I kept waiting for the headline. Baylor increases Mulkey's salary to $2.7 million annually or something. And, but I just kept hearing more and more. They're, they're working on the artwork there. Uh, she's coming. Her family's coming. And, uh, and, and they got the deal done. I just think it was, uh, it was so needed at a time where LSU's gotten beaten up in the headlines. They needed something. They needed a victory. And I think a, a strong, and not to get too deep too quickly, but a strong, empowered woman coming to LSU to take that job is exactly what LSU needs at this time. Well, they definitely needed a diversion and take the, take the attention off everything uh, that was going on. And Kim is doing well in the game. Uh, she's a pioneer in our game and for, for me that's what it's about. Continuing to grow the game, continuing to um, like she said in her speech develop and I don't think that it's just developing on the basketball court, it's developing off the court as well and I'm, uh, I've had an opportunity to speak to some of her players from, from, ba uh, from Baylor so um, it'll be interesting to see that aspect of it but for the basketball part of it it's really really good right now and I'm in front row seats like everybody else watching, but believing that it'll be something good. Well, similar to you, from Louisiana, a point guard, success at every level. Uh, if there was a WNBA back when she played, I'm sure she would have you know, had a long career like you did and everything, but just, just the resume, um, you know, she won 86% of her games at Baylor, three national championships. 
nine trips to the to the Elite Eight. I know two years ago when COVID hit, she was 28 and two. No telling what that team could have done as well. Right. So um, j just and it is humorous to an extent because when Tamika was playing. <laughs> And when LSU was at the height of their game, making five, strip, five straight trips to the Final Four and putting six, seven, eight, nine, ten more thousand people in the PMAC, Kim Mulkey was the enemy. She was an arch rival of yes. LSU. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and she made it known during her speech that, <laughs> that we, we met up a couple of times and she came out on top. But it was always fun games, but you're right. She was, and I think that's just the competitive nature. Uh, you spoke about Kim and what she'd done in her basketball career as a coach, but it's like, for me, with everything that she's done as a player, it carried over. Uh, and one thing that I'll stand on, even when she was recruiting me, is uh, the competitive nature in her as a player and as a, as a coach, so that's a good thing. Um, I enjoyed working with Nikki Fargus. She was always very friendly, uh, class act, uh, and she had uh, she had her moments at LSU. There was some success. There were a couple of trips to the Sweet 16. Um, it just kind of paled in comparison to what occurred before during your time and everything. And certainly, like LSU football, for example, it's all about recruiting. We want to bring talent in. How do we do that? We show Joe Burrow as much as we can. We show Tyron Matthew as much as we can. Uh, Jamar Chase. You show these people because, hey, come here, you can be like this person. And so apparently in the last 10 years, Tamika Johnson, Simone Augustus, Sylvia Fowles, the Mount Rushmore, as I say, of uh, players in LSU history. Joyce Walker back in the day, I guess she'd be the fourth. I didn't get a chance to watch her play, but she was a bad lady from what I understand. She wasn't. She's an even, even more phenomenal person. And I've gotten, to, I've gotten to know her as a person. Didn't really watch her play, of course, because she's uh, older than I am. But... Um, who she is as a person and what I've heard about her as a basketball player, she's a bad woman for real. <laughs> Simone, I think, averaged off the top of my head maybe 20 points a game or something like that. I think Joyce was 28, something like that. Yes. Steve, Steve Schneider, sports director of Channel 9, he saw her play. He said that she was incredible. But I've gotten that a lot, even from Coach Dale Brown. Yeah? Coach well, yeah. Brown speaks highly of <laughs> Joyce Walker, and that's, you don't take his – speaking of anyone lightly. Right, exactly. So the connection, uh, do you, are you hoping, now that Kim Mulkey is a coach moving forward, maybe that the former players are more involved in the program? Of course, you would, you, you, that's what you want. Like you become the young woman that you are at that point during that time of your, you know, your basketball life. Uh, you grow up and mature uh, more than anything. High school is one thing, but that is what you always come back to. Um, and I think, I we're hopeful, that it will be welcoming. I think it will be. Uh, she was welcoming. She touched on it. She touched on the history. She touched on not just the history of the program. She talked about Coach Gunner. Um, it's just exciting to see the passion. And I think that I think and I'm hopeful that it will be welcoming. And I know that I've spoken to some of my teammates and some of the alumni. And for the most part, very everybody's really excited to see because we with the blood, sweat, and tears that we've put. On the, on the grounds there, well, now you want to see the program back to what we know it's capable of being. Yeah, and it, it just kind of irritated me sometimes that they let it erode so much, you know. If it irritated you, <laughs> imagine what it did for us. So, and, and you're right, uh, we, we, we all talked about it and it was like, how can this continue? Like, how can you allow this to continue? And, you know, when it's not very much that you can do when you're on the outside. Yeah, because um, in the heyday, as I talked about, I looked up the averages. It was like, I think Simone's senior year, the average was 7,200. And I would even say that that is higher because you play those games early in the season in November and December. When you're playing teams, you know you're going to beat. People are doing Christmas. They're still involved in football. When it really became basketball season, and we sometimes joke in Baton Rouge basketball, season doesn't start until like mid-February <laughs> right. till people start really going to games. Right. But when you, I remember your senior night, uh, your senior day, I think I was getting shots of you guys on the floor looking around and, you know, just 10, 11,000 people there and entertained and into the games. And when March rolls around, the longer LSU's on television making this, these runs, that's free advertisement for your, your school. Absolutely. And I think, uh, listen, to come into the PMAC, the fight song is on, to hear the people 
cheering, ranting and raving and just as excited, it makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. And like you say, to go from that to seeing where there's nobody in there was absolutely disheartening and it was hard to watch. And that doesn't mean that, you know, Coach Fargus was terrible or what she didn't do. I can't say what she did or didn't do, but seeing is believing. And to see that many to the lack of, it's kind of like you worked so hard to help Coach Gunner in her process of building a program and raising up to the level of status to be respected, for the game to be respected, to see it diminish the way that it did was, was sad for us. Uh, Nick Saban is the best at what he does in college football. I've heard him at times say, you know, people make a big deal about my coaching methods and my strategies. and the, It ain't that hard. I get the best players. <laughs> you know? That does help. <laughs> right. And so, I, and, and a quick funny story, after you had left, uh, when Bob Starkey took over the team in 2007 and they're making a run in the tournament, LSU's going up against Gino Oriema. I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> and... And UConn in Fresno, California. And so Bob Starkey gets up at the podium during the LSU press conference and very hysterically kind of poor me, you know, oh, I've got to go up against Gino <laughs> and he's better looking than me. He's better dressed than me. Right. He's a better coach than me, you know. And so Gino comes and does his press conference by himself. And I repeat all, everything that Starkey just said. I said, he says, he's better look you're better looking than him. You're a better coach. You're better dressed. And that's all true. But he's got Sylvia Fowles. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And another one that I was excited to play with, uh, doing phenomenal things still, still playing in the league. Uh, Gino didn't disagree with the good-looking part, though. <laughs> but he did add that we had Sylvia Fowles, and that, that was something that um, he had to be concerned about. Uh, yeah. That purple and gold in the middle, in the paint, on it, and it's something that she did very well. To, to this day, the best game I think I've ever seen LSU women's basketball play was when they played UConn that night and just tore them up. And uh, Sylvia and uh, Kiana uh, was on her game hitting from the outside. It was a, it was a heck of a night. But, uh, yeah, Sylvia, a lot of comparisons to Shaq. Um, maybe her first year, maybe uh, growing into her body still, maybe a little clumsy, maybe a little timid. Uh, but by the time her career was over, she was a dominant, dominant force. To me, a, a lot of people think is that I've played, but she's almost like Benjamin Button. The older she gets, the better she is. I'm like, what? And where was this? And, it's, <laughs> and she's aging gracefully, and she's still playing well and dominating. I think this starts year 14 for her in uh, the WNBA, and she is still in beast mode. Yeah. Sylvia follows the Benjamin Button to basketball for me in the center. <laughs> <laughs> I remember after that game, I, I, I joked her. I said, I said, Sylvia, you're coming back for your senior year. You know, it was sarcastic because, of course, she was. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, the money's not there, right? I mean, you got to play. Keep playing as long as you can. But, uh, and Coach Starkey said she was very similar to Shaq because Starkey was a men's coach with Dale Brown at one point. Correct. And Shaq used to get hammered and no fouls were called. And he said it was similar with, with Sylvia. She got hit all the time and they wouldn't blow the whistle. And True. Got beat up. I agree. <laughs> I'm when, you're, agree. when you're smaller, you I, just fly and hit the ground, right? No, because I ain't get it either because I wouldn't fall. I was like, like you can't penalize me for being strong now. Yeah. But I, I, it was true. Like, um, Seal would get smacked and hit on and grabbed and Jersey hanging out of our shorts. And they like, just get up. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, you know, all right, Seal, you either yeah. I keep asking them to get them off you. Are you taking it to your own hands and get them off her? And I think <laughs> she's starting to learn that part. But and she got better with footwork. So how many uh, gold medals? Uh, you won a gold medal, right? I did. With uh, with, with when I was in college, we won. We won the gold medal uh, in college. Simone and I. I think Sylvie and Simone have won three or uh, maybe three, three okay. or four. I'm okay. not sure. It's a lot. Uh, yeah, it up. is. Um, I got a lot of gold the, between the two of them for sure. <laughs> Let me. Uh, so, Sue Gunner, uh, I always have great respect for the group of women who were coaching uh, at that time when women's sports were so disrespected and so treated like an afterthought. You know, Sue Gunner, Dee Dee Bro, Yvette Girard, uh, you know, Pat Summit obviously, you know, uh, won all those championships. And uh, Leon Balmore uh, over at Louisiana Tech, who Kim Mulkey played for and coached with and all that. But I just remember one thing about Sue. It's become more common now with coaches when they talk to you 
like if you ask a question, he would say, well, Tamika, you know. And it's a, it's a little thing, but it's a big thing when somebody addresses you by your name. And mm -hmm. I kind of remember Sue Gunner was the first to kind of do that. You know, I'm just, I'm just this little geeky kid asking questions. Well, Jacques, you know, you know idea. <laughs> right. well, Matt, you know, and uh, I, I just, I wish I had had more time to cover her because uh, she was, she was tremendous. She was a phenomenal woman. Coach Gunner could have asked me to go through a wall and we was going to do it it's one way or another. And we wasn't going to ask why she needed us to. And it was, I'm not just saying it because of, you know, oh, I played for her. No, she was that type of person. She didn't care if you was the janitor or the CEO. She was going to treat everybody the exact same. She had respect for people. Um, she loved the competitive nature in every last one of us. But who we were as women was more important to her. Who we became as women is what she talked about more than anything. Um, anything that got yeah. back to her. But we wanted to do, we, Coach Gunner was like that parent that you never wanted to disappoint. Honestly, I'll tell you my first true lesson on character. And this was before I understood the relationship that her and Coach Summit had. Um, and they definitely had a phenomenal relationship. And Coach Summit even said that Coach, Coach Gunner was one of her mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, SEC, uh, was the Magnificent Seven. And every paper, every article, and Coach Starkey was good for this, <laughs> making sure we knew what was being said, um, was saying, we're just going to rotate out. They don't have a seven people. We're going to keep rotating and keep rotating. And we ended up beating them. If I'm not mistaken, we beat them um, in the semifinals of that, that game. And SEC, SEC tournament. Yes. And we're listening to, you know, Coach, Coach Summer was a fierce competitor. And I'm young. And we're listening to the speech. And she doesn't acknowledge Coach Gunner openly. Now, whatever they talked about after it didn't. I wasn't going to know, but openly she didn't acknowledge it. And she was just talking about everything that they did wrong. And so now it's our turn over there, and you know we we pass by each other after, between the black sheets, and Coach Gunner get on the podium, and she's talking about how well Coach Summit uh, coached and all this kind of stuff, and blah blah blah. And I could not wait to get off that podium, and I got behind, and I was like, Coach, why would you do that? I said she didn't say anything to you. She didn't say anything about you. This this. She said, Tamika, come here, and she told everybody to go, and she said. It's not one person or one coach that I'm going to allow to change who I am. She said, I know Pat. And I know the type of person that she is. She's actually one of my good friends. She said, but who I am, I will always remain. My character is important to me, and your character will always be important to you. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Say no more. And then I actually got to learn who Coach Summit was uh, yeah. once I got drafted to Washington. Once I didn't have to play against her anymore. <laughs> She kind of yeah. let it down a little bit, and uh, actually, we talked about Coach Gunner and uh, had great basketball stories. There was a guy named Matt Deville who was working for Tiger Rag at the time, and I guess we, I don't know how many games we covered where LSU was playing Pat Summit, and I saw her step into a room or whatever, I don't know, six, seven, eight, and, uh, and he'd say, when she walks in a room, it was just like, there's certain people, you can't describe it, mm -hmm. they just have some sort of it factor where you know this person is like almost not from this earth, you know, they're on a different level than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Mulkey kind of had that when she stepped on campus the other day. When she walked on the campus and did that Coach O impersonation right. to his face, there, I'm like, this is a superstar right here. You know? That knows it, too. Yes. That knows it. It's one thing to be it and kind of walk with it, but she knows it. And I think that, what, that that's one of the things that helps her shine even brighter because she's, she's comfortable with who she is. She knows who she is. And she walks in it gracefully, honestly. Uh, what, what's that recent band, Walk It Like I Talk It? Uh, huh. <laughs> Don't Migos, is that? <laughs> as long as you don't get up and start doing yeah, it, no, that, that would be uh, good and very bad <laughs> for ratings, I guess, or, or, or clicks and views. And, in, and for a while, obviously, you know, Tennessee was what UConn is now. Uh, they were far and away the best in the sport. But by the time Sue's career, uh, she unfortunately had the health issues, had to step away. She was starting to return some punches on Pat. She was starting to land some punches and starting to win some of those games. I, mean, I remember twice. The PMAC was sold out completely, 15,000 people to see LSU play Tennessee. I think you won one and you lost one. Right. Uh, but, uh, but LSU was starting to get uh, prominent. And look, Pokey took over right. and went to the Final Four. You know, Sue never coached in a Final Four game because of her health. Those victories technically go to Sue Gunner, but Pokey was the interim head coach. And then right. Pokey went to the Final Four, I guess, um, three other times. Uh, 
Uh, she was the coach. I get well. It gets it gets confusing. Anyway, Sue had got, had built it up to a point right. where it was really about to take off. I agree. And the one thing that I would give Coach Gunner credit for is she always acknowledged her assistants. She always acknowledged her coaching staff and uh, what they gave and how they were a huge part of our success. Um, when Coach Gunner stepped down and Pokey stepped up, it almost was it was like nothing really dropped off um, because she allowed them to coach as well and it allowed us to have a relationship with the assistant coaches as well and, Co and Pokey stepped in and did what she needed to do for us to continue uh, the run that we started with. Yeah, Coach and, and Pokey loves Sue very uh, passionately. She played for her, right. similar, a point guard like you and everything. And, uh, uh, and, and look, to this day, I think it's one of the biggest what if uh, stories in LSU history. If Pokey stays as the head coach, that was 14 years ago she left. Does wow. LSU go to another, yeah, 14 years ago, 2007. Wow. That's so did, for, in the 14 years that have gone by, I mean, does LSU go to another eight, nine Final Fours? They you, you can't take away from the competitiveness in Pokey either. As a player, as a coach, um, and I got to see it up close and personal. Um, she was a competitor, she was a winner. And going off, uh, she went to the WNBA, she went, she won overseas, so uh, despite everything, you can't lose, you can't lose sight of the competitive side of people. And I think for sure, I can probably say this without any hesitation, LSU basketball would have been rocking. Yeah. And I'll stand on that. Yeah. Would have been rocking if she... If things hadn't gone high, well, she would have yeah. continued her tenure and things hadn't blown up or whatever. Uh, the competitive yeah. side of Pokey would have will anybody else that came through because she was a winner. And she would have figured it out yeah. how to win at the Final Four maybe yeah. and win a national title or two. Yeah. It's funny how the complaints, they shift like it used to be. Well, they make it to the Final Four, but they hadn't won a game. And now it's like, can we win a game in the NCAA tournament? You know? I yeah, mean, absolutely. You get spoiled. Absolutely. You do. And I think the run that we had definitely spoiled a lot of people. It was funny to me because it almost made me think that I, I had a question how long I had been out of school. Because some people would say, I remember when y'all were in the Final Four, and I, I had a question, like, Gee, that was a long time ago. But the excitement that we brought um, was something that people were still holding on to. And we would joke, uh, Van Chancellor coached the team. <laughs> and Kiana, Kiana Chaney is the best <laughs> three-point shooter in the country, in the nation. <laughs> And the nation. I think he got that down pat. That's exactly <laughs> how Coach Chancellor was sound. He, he, he took the job. He's like, I'm 65. I feel like I'm 35. I'm ready. <laughs> and he was a very, I think he was a very good X's and O's coach. And, and that team, he inherited that loaded team with Sylvia and all that. Absolutely. Them. And he took them to the Final Four. I think he coached them pretty well. Some girl named Alexis Hornbuckle, who hadn't scored the entire game, Gets a rebound and puts it in with point seven left, and LSU loses to Tennessee and right. Tampa. Um, that team had a shot to win it all, but uh, that was a that was a tough day. And then the next day, I think Sylvia was the number one pick in the draft. Of number month. two. Number they, two. They let Candace go number one. We, uh, we forgive them for that, though. We forgive them. That's right. That's it's right. kind of hard to fight against it because she kind of lit it up her fresh her rookie season too. Candace is uh, she is a superstar without a doubt. I remember those battles of. Uh, of you guys going up against Tennessee and and Candace Parker and um, and now she's you know thriving. Is she a player and a broadcaster these yes. days? Yes. Yes. Did it all. How about that? Well, look uh, and then to go back to Mika's years at LSU. Okay, your first year, second round of the tournament, second year Elite Eight, and you beat Louisiana Tech to go to the Elite Eight, which was a very big deal at the time. It was. Because they were, Louisiana Tech was like UConn or Tennessee in the 80s, and this was their sport. This is what they were, won national champions. They had Cheryl Ford, Carl Malone's daughter. Carl was actually there in the stands as a, as a of course, for his <laughs> alma mater, but we do know his son played football for us. So That's right. A, um, KJ. But, uh, yeah, it was a really big game. It was a really big deal, and it was two Louisiana schools on a neutral site away from, uh, away from home. So... All the talk and all the uh, uh, Louisiana Tech had the upper hand because of the history that it had. And even though we were winning, they still had something that we didn't, which were the championships. So mm -hmm. 
it was fun. It was uh, pretty cool to advance. So, um, and then your third year, uh, 27 wins, Final Four, and then your last year, 33-3. and 14-0 and in the SEC. Uh, your NCAA wins... 70 to 36 over Stetson, 76 to 43 over Arizona, 90 to 48 over Liberty. Uh, you beat Duke by 10, 59-41, uh, 59-49. And uh, Kim Mulkey referenced the game the other day. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Which we debated, was that a good move or not? Was that the one line that we could have left out? But uh, that was disappointing, wasn't it? I mean, it, it seemed like you guys were the better team. It was, and you know, if I'm not mistaken, Jacques, we played them early in that season, early on, and we end up winning, if I'm not mistaken, at their place. But like she said, they came back and they beat us when it counted most. And that team, for sure, we thought that we had what it take, what it took to um, to go out and do it. You had you the have big everybody three. It coming was you, back. Simone, and Sylvia Rollins. Yes, and team. I decided to come back for mm -hmm. that fifth year, and we wanted to prove, like we wanted to, that was something that we absolutely wanted. And uh, we came up short uh, to So tie game Malkin. at halftime, I think. Your memory of that is much oh, better than mine. LSUsports.net today, I looked at that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was a good, it was, it was good, but it was, uh, it was also disheartening because we wanted to be that one. Um, but like Kim said, you know, of the banners that's up there, there doesn't, there, there isn't a championship banner. So Coach Malky, you said that that's what you're here for. So, you know, let's see it. Tamika's ready. <laughs> Season ticket holder. She's on the front row. <laughs> All day. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Um, Simone Augustus. So Simone coming to LSU, this, this was a, this was a, a huge shift, right? Th this set up these final fours when she decided to come to LSU, right? It helped. I mean, you get a hometown kid who's uh, absolutely phenomenal in her sport, but still has a room to grow. Yeah. Um, and it helped with being from there, being top in the league and all this, and the attention. Um, we all grew up together, and I think we grew and blossomed and developed into the players that uh, we went on to be. But it was absolutely uh, part of the game changer. Um, and I say that because it doesn't matter if we put us on Mount Rushmore, none of us could do what we did without each other. But it was a huge part, and Simone is a huge part of LSU and our success. What was the chemistry between you and her on the floor playing? Like you passing with the ball and you know, fast breaks and those kind of things? It's almost like what's understood don't need to be said. It's not very much that Mona and I worked on like that. Um, it was just, you knew. As a point guard, I know I need to get the ball to the f first open person. And as uh, the team and the offense that we ran, we knew the attention that she was going to get with the passing and the screening and the cutting. Anybody could have been open. So, uh, but she was a finisher. So it's like, what's understood <laughs> don't need to be said. And we understood the competitive nature. We understood that we wanted to win. Your aspirations. You you do enjoy coaching, and you know you're you're still not even forty years old yet, right? So I'm not. <laughs> long way to go. Not that long. I'm thirty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> you could have lied. You could have said thirty-five <laughs> or something. You know. So, um, my aspiration is to continue to grow and to continue to learn, and to to continue to instill importance to as many kids as I'm allowed to. Yeah. You like, um, you know, high school kids. I'm sure. I mean, that's, that's a whole different dynamic in those Ooh. four years as opposed to college. Yes, it's different. High school kids are definitely different. I hadn't had the opportunity to work with college kids from a coaching standpoint. I mean, I've done it with going train some people or talking to some of the players back at school and going speaking to some of the college kids and some of the colleges that I've spoken to from that perspective. Um, but of course, college is totally different because you get a lot of a lot of the one on one time. And it's when you reach them at that point. If I'm reflecting back on my own life, you reach them at that point where you think you know it, but you still have so much more room to grow. So for me, I honestly say, Jacques, whatever God has in store for me, that's the, that's the path that I'm going to take without any hesitation. 
Now, and these are the kind of things we start talking about where we start sounding like we're getting old and whatnot, you know. Uh, when we play, the kids these days or whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, they're just, they're so distracted, right? They got so many people and things. And look, I spend way too much time on my cell phone, way too much, and the media and checking Twitter and all these things. But and the, and the Instagram and the things that they're posting and talking about and the bullying and stuff. I mean, the, the people have challenges. These younger kids have challenges that we didn't have, I think. I'm so thankful that I wasn't on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and everything when we were in school. Thank God, because it's actually taking over their lives. Um, and it's actually causing more harm than anything. Depression sets in. How many likes? That means you're not as popular as this. And they don't understand that sometimes people live a different life than they do on camera. Um, yeah. They're definitely different. They have, you're right, they have so many different distractions. And they're not even positive distractions. Like, uh, we would go outside. I was an outside kid. We played until the street lights came on. And sometimes we were hoping that the light bulb hadn't blew out. Um, but these kids now, you can't even get them to go outside now because they can't even put their phone down. And they're sitting at the table eating dinner, texting each other, talking. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, so it's definitely different. And I understand you have to change with the time. I used to say that I'm not that far removed from him, but I'm starting to think and see that I am very much far removed from him, but I'm close enough to him to still grab him. So that's the beauty of it. I can still communicate with him, talk they talk, speak their language, dress like them, dress apart, and still be one of the cool, the cool coaches around here. Yeah. So that helps a lot. The one thing, Tamika, that I really don't like is I'm working on strengthening my brand. And if you're a school, if you're a, a business, an organization, I understand that. But I think the saying I, I kind of came up with is, well, you're a human being, not a pair of blue jeans, you know, working on my brand. It's just, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm just not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of it either. And I've like coming up, my parents didn't play. <laughs> like any guardian, like if an adult you was might get bopped on the head if you were on your cell phone. Yeah, right like there. it's not me. I'm talking to you. What are you doing? And this, this, but. Um, if my coaches went to them on something, I was in trouble. Yeah. Because that means that I'm not showing how I was raised. I'm not acting how I should act. Something's wrong. To me, and people will get upset with it, now you have to recruit the parents to even consider whether or not you want the child. Because the parents, I'm like, it's almost like the parents are playing. And I'm like, well, this is what has to be, and this is happening. I was like, let the kid be a kid. Allow the kid to enjoy the game. Yeah. I say, don't take the fun out of it, because when the business aspect actually hits, then it's going to be like, I've already done it, and they're not going to want to do it anymore. Allow them to enjoy it for as long as possible. So as more parents are so involved in this, and it's one thing if you're cheering and you're rooting and you want the best for your kid, and it's just, yes, it's another thing when, you're trying to get the best this and the best that, and I, they need this for their brand. They need this video, and they, this has to be coming. It's like everybody's on social media in competition with sometimes your own teammates. I'm like, yeah. I don't have time for that. This is what's going to take place, and I think the beauty of it with me <coughs> coaching is I get an opportunity to say I don't have to exploit your child. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do because everything that you can possibly want your child to do, I've done. So it's like I've already kind of taking that road to help grab their hand to walk them down it if allowed if not then i'm not the if i was playing you. for tamika i'd listen to her <laughs> i'm gonna say that <laughs> thanks John. i think her resume kind of speaks to the fact that she knows what she's doing she might have an idea about uh seeing is believing for these kids though like we could talk about the resume and all this kind of stuff like i literally had to take my whistle off one day and say i'm not your coach and we play five on five i'm not your coach what do you think about i'm not your coach don't ask me anything and I'm playing, and it's like, oh, she still can play. I was like, come on, man. Like, usually, like, Lisa and Dawn them couldn't tell me, Google me, because that wasn't then. Now I can say, right. okay, mm. go to YouTube and look it up. That's still not enough for them. So you have to, sometimes you have to get, that you get out there and show them that you it's can not, still do it. It's not a black and white video, you know. It's, uh, no, yeah. it's not. We do, we, we've graduated <laughs> to some color. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in a black and white era, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am in a color era. The, uh, the old school announcer. Oh, uh, here comes Tamika Johnson. I'm saying, she's <laughs> yes. a great young lady. All right, makes a layup. Uh, like, you might need to be doing some voiceover. Well, I'm, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> just be an idiot like Adam Sandler, right? And just make millions to make, 
you know, do impressions. And let me ask you this too, serious topic um, too. The transfer portal and all this Woo! stuff in, in, um, in collegiate athletics, I really feel like the concept of team is really under attack right now. And I realize the coaches get paid a lot of money, but if you're trying to keep a football team together and guys are opting out and you're trying to keep a basketball team together and I can just enter the transfer portal and go somewhere else without having to sit out or anything. Uh, man, I mean, I think LSU fans, you know, it's going to work in their advantage if Kim Mulkey t brings three or four very talented girls over from Baylor to play for LSU and they're in the NCAA tourna tournament immediately. But I don't know how these coaches are dealing with all this stuff. I don't either, and the transfer portal is definitely new for me uh, because that wasn't around when we were playing. Um, it's hard because I can see it from the player's perspective. I can see it from the coach's perspective, but then there's a fine line between loyalty. Um, and there's not a sense of it. And I, I think it goes back to AAU, where AAU was totally different than how it was when, when we played. And some of these kids, oh, you don't play? I, well, I'm going to play for this other team. And you start to, be, it becomes a pattern. Now we can look at it now at college because that's what's, on the news and stuff that's up on the forefront the most but i think it starts younger where there's no sense of loyalty to anything um at the same time coaches from that standpoint i understand it's a business and you need to be able to do it but the fine line for me jack is that the loyalty is a gray area um and it gives the kids like this out that they absolutely take upon the drop of a dime so for uh, my question, my question would be how much are you willing to fight for what it is that you absolutely want? Because they're in life, and sometimes people don't understand that basketball is not just a game. It's absolutely life. So in life, are you just going to give up on everything and say, I'm going to go start something new? Right. You're not going to be able to do that. You have to be able to go through some things to appreciate the better value of it at the end. If you're Joe Burrow, um, you know, that transfer – that's a little different right. than I'm a freshman. I'm getting my butt kicked over here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kick uh, pitch a fit and leave or something. Like yeah, that. I'm gonna go find somewhere else where I can be that person, or I, somebody else gonna allow me to be the top person. Not I'm here. I'm underneath uh, a phenomenal coach if that's the situation, and I can grow and learn and prosper to be who it is that I believe I can be. But that's another thing. Most kids don't know who they're capable of being. Yeah. Well, you were in school with like Matt Flynn and uh, you know Marcus Randall. Marcus didn't get to play all the time, but he did get to play uh, here and there because he stayed. You know. Right. And who who had who forgot about the bluegrass miracle? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You might be part of a moment. You know that people will never forget. Right. You might throw up a half court shot and sink it in some <laughs> game. Right. I mean. Those exactly. Are the things. You were an LSU Tiger. Well. Uh, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, you've always been a it. favorite. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, just a great person for, uh, for everyone to look up to as a uh, player at LSU, WNBA level, and uh, now a coach here at John Curtis. They're very proud of her here, and rightfully so, a state champion. It's Tamika Johnson. Appreciate you being here. And Thank you. Thanks, thanks for stopping so. by. Thanks for having me.